Hello everyone and welcome to Kaiserreich, a mod where Germany won World War I, unlike how they historically lost World War I, and we are going today play in China instead of whatever is happening here. China has changed a lot over the course of Kaiserreich as a mod. Right now how it exists currently is everything in China is a puppet of the Qing government and Germany has a bit of influence here. Additionally too, we're going to be playing as as one of the most popular routes in all of Kaiserreich. It's been recently updated too, which is kind of surprising, so we'll definitely be playing it today. It requires us to start playing as the League of the Eight Provinces, but we won't exactly be playing as them as things go on. And I have kind of played this path once before, but I played it in Kaiser Redux years ago, which Kaiser Redux is just Kaiserreich, but very different. It's not just Kaiserreich. You can see two in Kaiserreich, there is this League of Legation cities guaranteed by all the great powers. So a lot of our important ports are owned by them. I assume later on in our focus tree, we'll be trying to get those back. I'm sure a lot of fun stuff can happen. I find it interesting too that Macau is not part of those cities and is just directly owned by Portugal still. Yeah, and too, the situation is not getting better. It's getting worse. Unrest is spreading. Yeah, and things are not going well for this regime terribly event after terrible event and now terrible national spirit and everything's broken and more incidents. I don't think we're going to be building any factories. We're now breaking apart. A new warlord is going to pop out of us, so we're probably not quite eight provinces anymore. We're now also having to deal with Black Monday, which is Germany's financial collapse. And there's a mutiny. We lose some equipment and convoys. All great stuff. You can tell that this is a very stable country. Spreading insubordination, secret negotiations, riots, the negotiations don't go through. And here we are, finally. There's a lot of color in China now. We're playing as the left Kuomintang. Traditionally, the nationalists in the timeline where Germany lost World War I and they were exiled to Taiwan. Now we're not really the nationalists, kind of the opposite, but still the Kuomintang, we still have the one flag. And hey, we have one military factory now, which is broken, so we can't actually use it, but it's a nice thought. We don't have any civilian factories to fix it with either, so yeah, not much we can do. What I should do is get a general and field marshal in charge of the army. These are decent generals. They have a ton of traits. It's kind of stupid not to be using them, so we will go ahead and actually use them now. We also, through an event, got a ton of new generals. None of them are better than the ones we're currently using, really, so no need to switch them out. And we're doing our decisions to, as they're available, appealing for support, raising new divisions, getting supplies. As we take over more cities, we'll be able to get even more divisions, though even with the number of divisions we currently have, we can easily win this. We will now try to move here to encircle this division. The French tank will do whatever it wants. We're trying to encircle this division too. Lots of potential encirclements if things go well, and I think things will be going well. It's already looking promising. We do need to finish this decently fast though, because the longer it takes us to capture Nanjing, the lower our morale will get. Our morale is unbreakable right now, though so maybe that means it will never break. Probably not. Probably hyperbole, unfortunately. Okay, and we're encircling a division here. Some of our other encirclements were undone by the fact that the Anquing clique is losing ground. Hopefully they don't capitulate. And great, Anquing is falling apart, but they did help us get another encirclement, so that's useful. They're definitely going to lose, but they can at least help us, and it looks like we're going to finally move into Nanjing, and that mission is complete, and we automatically win. This is interesting too, we actually have a balance of power mechanic between the Provisional Action Committee and the Reorganized Comrades Association. Okay, and we're in a good situation here. We're pinning all their divisions, so we'll just go walk into all the victory points. Well, I guess we weren't pinning this division well enough, so maybe we won't, but I think we can get this cavalry around this guy still. And it looks like there's a possibility here too to form an alliance if things go well with the social conservative clique 
like. We'll see what happens. This Northwest conflict has to end first and we will demobilize our economy too. We don't want to lose stability. And there we go. We don't have any immediate way to get war goals just yet, but I assume we will get them soon or be declared on. We have a ton of equipment though, so we're going to be able to raise massive hordes of divisions. And I think with those divisions, be able to easily fight everybody else in China. Oh, wow, and Huey Long was elected president of the US. I'm sure nothing will happen. Okay, and now that we've completed this focus look to the West, we can deal with the warlords. I assume that'll let us deal with every country that isn't the empire. And then this focus here will give us our war goal against the empire. So that'll be nice. Hopefully the warlords just agree to join us. I'm sure they all will. If not, this is going to be kind of difficult because we'll have to attack specifically in this arrangement all the way around in a circle. Okay, and we have to actually wait for the civil war to end before we're able to do any of our decisions. So we will sit and wait for now, do our focuses that will fix our terrible army. And both sides of the civil war hate us, so there's no one we really want to win. But I'm just gonna send this side a volunteer so that I can try to help them win so this will end. Okay, and I've encircled these guys for them. Um, they might encircle my volunteer, actually. Oh no, never mind. They <laughs> got a division in there. That's nice. That will be kind of useful if we can take the city and if this just capitulates them. And with that, now we should be able to do this decision here. We'll demand they become a subject. Maybe they'll be so happy that we ended their civil war that they'll just accept. Maybe not though. Okay, even though we helped them, they're refusing to join us. Very annoying. We don't have any navy, so no reason to do any navy invasions. We'll just get this decision. I know how weak their army is because of my volunteers, so I am prepared. I'll just encircle their entire army and then we will snake and take all the victory points to minimize the number of casualties we take throughout this process. We can also support the CSA. I'm not going to because we need the guns for ourselves, but that is a nice decision. <laughs> Very fun. Okay, and finally someone joins us. These guys are now an associated government. They also too have a lot of divisions and are getting called into this thing, so that's convenient. I guess next we now need to integrate our puppet before we can continue. It says they only have a 15% refusal chance, so once we have the political power, I'm willing to bet on 85% odds. And with our integration policy, we're slowly integrating areas too. Our manpower is creeping up. We're having to use less of it to occupy places. Okay, and Tibet declared war on our subject, and we're now called into the war, so we're now in a defensive war against Tibet. The Japan-supported Manchurian government is attacking the Empire. I kind of hope the Empire wins, honestly. Don't know what's gonna happen here, but we'll see. We're kind of distracted right now with Tibet. So there we are. We now have the worst borders ever, and now we will try to begin integrating our subject. <laughs> okay, and without any war justification warning, the Qing government declared war on us. At least we have these divisions here that we can hurry and move to the border. They're the one fighting two wars, so I, I don't know why they willingly wanted to start a war on two fronts, but oh well. I guess we should probably start training some new divisions too. I don't really know what our puppet is doing. They're just doing a defense territory order, but they have an active front line, but they're not setting up a front line. It's kind of weird. They're only setting up a front line on a country they aren't at war with. Wow, and Japan is helping us. It'll increase radicalism, but they're giving us free factories. So I'll take free factories. Maybe they like us more than they like Manchuria. I don't know. Okay, and they capitulated. It looks like their puppet isn't in the peace deal. That's interesting. But yeah, we'll just take whatever we can and then prepare for war against the scary strong guys in the north. And I'm going to send volunteers again. This time, it's probably a more intelligent idea to send volunteers than that other time. Well, it was still a smart move, but this time it'll pay off more because these guys are more aligned with us and will probably act actually make an alliance. Yeah, the front line here is kind of frozen. There are these big gaps, but no one is moving into them and there's terrible supply, so I kind of see why, but maybe we can get to their capital and just ignore the supply problem. Okay, nice. They didn't like take everything, but this is over, so that's good. And we will offer them an alliance. They join us and now this is great. We have everybody united against the one final other pretender. We can't take their divisions though which is really annoying, but besides not being able to take their divisions, everything is fine. The big World War II is happening also as we're finishing up our unification. And this is actually
literally the best thing our AI subjects can do. Hold the line so that our divisions can attack. I'm so happy to see this. And if we finish this encirclement here, this is going to end very badly for them. And they're making the very smart decision to move out of this tile. If they move out of this tile, we can encircle their entire army. But new problem, we're now war with Japan. So now Japan can put all their divisions here to reinforce all of the losses they just took. We are rerouting our divisions to the south too, because Siam is in their faction and we now have this border with them. Let's just try to clean up this encirclement as fast as possible. Nice, we got this devastated national economy, national spirit to make things even better. Yeah, this might be a kind of bad turning point here in our conflict. And they're naval invading us, but I did garrison the port just in case something like this happens. I don't know what my subject was doing. They somehow got all their divisions encircled here. This is why I wish I could take control of their divisions. That's why it exists in Hoi 4. I don't know why it's disabled for these subjects. I don't know. Anyways, we're stealing divisions from the Siam front to take to here so we can take divisions from the encirclements to go back here because our subject isn't helping us anymore. Okay, interesting development. The Fengtian government is now at war with Japan too, so this is even more complicated now. I think I'm going to try to save my subject's divisions. Still have no clue how they all got encircled there. Okay, I retreated a little bit and now I'm just gonna hold the front until I build enough anti-air to put anti-air in my divisions. We really need anti-air. Well, maybe we don't. They're not even using their... Okay, never mind. They're the plan. So like I was saying, we really need anti-air. And so yeah, this is a great success. I actually had enough anti-air. So we we're able to put anti-air in our division and we encircled these two divisions. And like their friends before them, Japan has now been encircled too up here. I guess they have military access, so they're not really encircled, but they're kind of encircled in a way. This is untenable possessions for for them. And even without our guns too, the Socialist Republic of America has won. The front in Siam though is not going well, even with our kind of working together with the Germans thing going on, nothing is happening. Okay, and it appears this should be over soon. We have this ticking down to Japan asking for peace. For this to fail, they have to retake full control of Southern Korea and Northern Korea. And here, peace at last. This is amazing. Most importantly though, this means we can finally integrate our stupid subjects who are unable to do anything themselves because they're so stupid. I think this is a good ending point though. We could always, you know, continue and try to invade Japan when the truce ends. But I'm happy with this and I will um, see you all next time.